we have to stick what we are doing. If some scholar come to you, let me teach you, then you come with me and we're going to spend few days and this and that. If you ask me what I'm teaching you, I'm not teaching you something new. I'm teaching you what Quran and Sayyidis teach you. That's what I'm teaching you. I don't have any other book except the Quran. If somebody doesn't have a Quran in his hand, he's teaching you something else, forget it. He's misguiding and he's misguiding other people also. Do not follow him. Do not even do that. You can pick up some good things he's teaching you, just pick up that and leave the other things. But do not follow what he's teaching you. But usually, your own nafs, you know nafs, right? Yes. Your own inside conscience will mislead you also. Like you're a sinner person, come and go with him, and you're gonna be very pious and this and that. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do nothing. Just do the way you're living your life. You have to live a life according to the sunnah. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. You don't need to do an extra. There's a lot of uh, people who do the extra ibadah. Like let's say, uh, I get a question, like somebody say that uh, they have a problem in their life and some sheikh told them to do this, some special cure like for these days and this thing and recite this for these days and do this cure. This all bid'ah stuff. This is nothing was taught by the Prophet Wasallam. Not the biggest problem that we have. People have a problem they start looking a cure. Mm -hmm. They start looking, okay, how are we going to get rid of this problem? Mm -hmm. Now they go to the bookstore, try to find the book where they can find the cure. But you don't need to do any cure unless it is uh, instructed by the Prophet ﷺ. You're going to find a lot of information on a YouTube and on a Google. A lot of Maulanas and Sheikhs and Imams, they're going to instruct you, okay, you have uh, this problem in your life, recite this for this many days, and you're going to have a cure, inshallah. Don't do it because this is not something was taught by the Prophet sallallahu If you read like a chapter 33 Surah Azab in a verse number 71 and 72, it says, "Ya illa zina amanu taqullah wa kulu kalan sidida wa yuslih lakum amalakum wa yafil lakum zunubakum wa mayyut illaha wa rasulahu fakad faaz faazan azima." The person who's going to success. Can we digress back to what you were saying about the four righteous imams? What is it? Uh, the four righteous imams, yeah, four righteous they, imams. The, or four righteous yeah. imams that stated time? that if they said anything that contradicts Tahan, <coughs> disregard what they say. Yeah. Also, Allah says in the Quran that the right way is distinct from error, so you should know that. Also, in the Quran, uh, Allah announced that there will be 72 sects. <laughs> And what these sects are about when you break them down from the Arabic and the hermeneutical understanding of the Arabic is that there are 72 different interpretations. This was the madness that he was talking about in Pakistan. So you have like, to that's what I'm trying to give an example. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to give an example about the four imams. This is an exact example of what's going on right now. Like, let's say if you ask me a question, can I drink a water in a glass? I would say, okay, yes, that you can do that. It's permissible. It's nothing wrong because it's not contradicting the commandments of Allah. It's halal. You can do that. Okay, can I drink a water in a bottle? I say, yeah, you can do that. So f I will say the four things are permissible, but not your generation, but the next generation. They came, and they will say, okay, my father used to drink in a bottle water. I'm going to just stick with the bottle. I'm going to stick with that. The four imams was just an optional. You have the right to either follow, but you don't need to restrict yourself to four of them only. Thank you. You do not have to restrict about yourself. Brother Mohsen, can you come here? Uh, get a sister's yeah. question, get a pen, and write her to like whatever the questions she has, okay? She can write the questions, okay? I don't know, somebody has a pen, please? Can I give us a pen? Why can't she speak? No, sisters speak in our mosques, all right? Was it? Sisters speak in our mosques. They can address the speaker. We don't have the thing where they got to write down something. They can speak. No, no, what I'm saying, if she has a question, so she can put it here. That's what she I'm saying. She can speak. She's a human being. Let us oh. speak. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of uh, treating women fairly, 
we let women speak. Of course, of course. Right? No, because we are recording a lecture, so we don't want yeah. to, uh, to black come in the front. So I told her to speak up. Yeah. Will you prefer to uh, write it down or speak? Because you're recording, it's okay. I'm not going to need to. Okay, then give it a minute. Um, just just take it. Because I don't hear her, because she's too far away. No, because she's too far away, I don't hear her. So that's why, I mean, okay. take this, please. Mohsin, because she's, she's too far away. OK, I'm going to continue with that, please. OK, let's try not to interrupt that, because this is being a recording, and I don't want to be interrupted. Now I have to cut this part in a beginning. You know, I have to make an editing. The word unusual in conversation, I have to cut that report up to make it like a proper professional video because we don't like the public talking in the middle and all that. But if you have questions, please do ask me, come over here because you're pushing far away, I don't hear you. Okay, so you got my, you got my point. Yeah. We do not have to restrict, let's say four imams told you something is permissible. Now, I would say, okay, this is also permissible to drink a water in your hand. That's permissible because this is halal, right? So that means we do not have to restrict ourselves to the four imams. That's not our reasoning. That's only option. What the later generations, like in India, Pakistan, and the Bangladesh, these three countries, they, some of them has uh, more than 90% restricted themselves. They, they say, no, I, I'm totally happy. And I had a conversation with a couple of imams. And uh, they were the scholars, mashallah, good scholars, better than me, inshallah. So, I told them, uh, what do you follow? He said, Alhamdulillah, I'm 100% Hanfi. He said, I'm 100% Hanfi. He said, what do, what do I follow? I said, Alhamdulillah, I ha I'm 100% Muhammadi. I follow Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because if you know the hadith of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said on, on the Day of Judgment, whoever you are following, right, on the Day of Judgment, you are going to be standing on the Day of Judgment with that scholar. Like, it, let's say if you limit yourself, okay, my way of life is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're going to be standing with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Qiyamah. But if you say, okay, no, I have restricted myself to this sheikh and this imam and this mufti and this peer or this blah, blah, people who are very elders, they have some lot of blessings. So you, you are totally misguided. 